Yeah. Say. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War Part Two, Episode Ten, I believe. We just watched Episode Ten. You know what I'm saying? And boys, there are a lot to talk about. Yeah. I mean, hey, man, we say it all the time. What a time to be an anime fan, but you see what I'm wearing. What a time to be a big three fan, because honestly, they've all been coming with it. But looking at the one, I guess, the star of the hour, Bleach, hey, man, as he said, there's a lot of shit to talk about. And first things first, if you haven't already, head over to the TikTok to check out our reaction to a lot of the crazy ass shit that happened in this episode yes sir yes sir but uh first things first why like and i'm gonna run with my theory here about why the captains fight harder as zombies because it's like you know i heard somewhere about like just human brain function in general like everything you do like physically you subconsciously hold yourself back. I feel yeah. like just because they're zombies, they're, then they by default fight harder because of that because they don't hold themselves back at all. Like, I think it's a mixture of that. Like, I think it's a mixture of that slash that's them at their peak. Because it's like, you see the captains that are turning to the zombies too, let alone Lieutenant if you include Rankiku. It's not just any ones. It's the ones that you could say are all just infinite potential. Especially just looking at the one nigga. I forgot his name, but the nigga who just throws quite literal hands. And Hitsugaya, the silver-haired club, if you will. Both of them, they're captains, so it's like we respect their strength. But we only, like, I feel like they only were captains in title up until now. Especially Hitsugaya. Like, I feel like he should have been a lot stronger. I almost feel like this is all power that he's had. Like you said, he's been holding back, but maybe he just didn't even know he was holding back. Like, yeah, I almost exactly, feel yeah. like I almost feel like it's the zombie being better with the controller, if you will. Yeah, like, I mean, literally, they were doing shit, like, especially Hitsugaya. I mean, he put ice on his fucking kneecap and kneed him in the face, like... That is not some shit I would ever see Hitsugaya doing, ever. Like, off-rip, the zombie was fighting better than Hitsu. He The zombie was using Hitsugaya's power and body better than Hitsugaya uses it. Like, that was the better Hitsugaya right there. I don't think normal Hitsugaya would have beat that shit. Hell no. Like, zombie Hitsugaya would beat the shit out of the regular one. The way how he was fighting, for sure. For sure. I mean, all of them, all of the zombie captains, like, they would spank themselves. Mm hmm. Like badly. Yeah. Which is crazy because that just shows how broken it is to turn them into zombies in the first place. Just mindless killing machines. Hell yeah. But that man, Miami, I'm pretty sure that's how you say his name. That nigga shit, like. I'm very curious, and I was asking while we were watching. I'm very curious when he drugged these niggas. Like, yeah, cause, like, what? Like, I understand. Okay, whatever drug he used, they're not able to kill him, or they go back moments before that. I get that, but nigga, they were just standing there talking, and then all of a sudden, fight breaks off. Hitsugaya kills him. And then we're back to the start of when they were talking. So when did he do that shit? Yeah, that's really interesting. Like, if I had to take a guess, like, I have no fucking idea. Maybe he did it a while ago just as a precaution. He could have. Just because of who he is, I wouldn't be surprised if he made that kind of big brain play. Just because, again, who he is. But if I had to take my guess, because I have no shot or idea, but... If I had to take my guess, maybe, like, when he, like, caught his knee, blocked his knee, and, like, did something with it, like, 
or put whatever that shit was on it that kind of wrapped his knee momentarily. I wonder if that was the drug administrator. And maybe not, but who really knows until they show that shit. Or at least show us more. Because then they went out of their way to literally not show us him drugging the other two while showing us him drugging the other two. So it was like, it's really interesting. Like, they're going out of their way not to give it to us. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Because at first I was thinking it was that too. Like, it was like the, that purple gooey shit. Yeah. Like, they're literally going out of their way not to. So it was like, I'm wondering if that was it. It could have been. But that nigga really did show out. Because it's like, I really can't. Like, I'm going to be honest. He's the guy that's the one that's the most surprising. Zombie, he's the guy, I should say. Because. Yeah. Even still, now, to be fair, we did say maybe he was supposed to get a lot stronger. He just had a really terrible showing against Bass B, if you will. So maybe this is what he's a guy supposed to look like, vice versa, once getting his bond card took and then getting it right back. Because we didn't really get to see what that he's a guy would look like. Maybe this is hit, but... Wow, this looks so much crazier than what we've seen before. Yeah. I just hope, and I'm gonna assume that's the case. But the more, and let alone hearing Hitsugaya and Miami, or hearing Miami and Bakia talk to each other, I don't know anymore. Like, I'm gonna hope the zombies it's not permanent. I feel like there's no way it is. Yeah, type shit. Like. I'm just going to assume well, as soon as this, like, invasion shit is completely over, they're going to go back to normal. Like, he's going to fix them, probably. I mean, yeah. I would I would fucking hope so. Hopefully. Because that'd be a real tragic way to go. You say he got off screen. Don't get me wrong. I fucked with zombie Hitsugaya. That nigga cold. And he's black. But still, yeah. like, we need the real yeah. thing back. Yeah, like, just by default, especially Rangiku, too. Like, all of our beloved Soul Reapers, we definitely want... We want to trade them for zombies. It's just... Damn, it's just... That Them niggas be boxing. Them niggas be boxing, though. Yeah. And even still, it's just, like... It's real tough looking at their situation. Let alone the zombie caster was dealt with pretty easily. So it's like... I'm sure... Those two niggas, Kisuke and Miami, would easily be able to whip up some shit. But, man. Yeah, it's, it's looking tough, but given Miami's track record as a mad scientist, he could probably cure yeah. that shit in an episode. Probably. Probably. Nine out of ten, they're probably not going to just kill off guy like that. Yeah, like the but, other two, I don't know, but guy for sure and Rangiku, like, they're going and if role. they're getting saved, then the other the by default, by yeah. Default. It's just tough. Definitely have to talk about it still. Yeah, it's just tough. But you know, I will say like that shit is tough. Looking at that whole ordeal, what else is tough is looking at this nigga Biakia. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was showing out. It's not really that surprising to me though, just knowing the kind of boost he should have got at the Royal Palace. So it's like, I don't know how much to really take that. The only thing that I could really take from that is when bro had the blick aimed at the back of his head from point blank range and he dodged the bullet and delivered yeah. a counter strike basically before he even finished pulling the trigger. That was like a feat in itself. Yeah, it made Aside from that, got... like, he literally one-shotted the rest of them, like, and one shot yeah. at that nigga, like, not really too. I we kind of expected. I didn't think it was gonna be that easy, but we knew these niggas was not gonna have too much problems with them. And we also see at the very end of the episode, you know, one of the other stern writers coming on to finish off L. And at this point, like, it's tough, but I almost kind of just look at it almost as like, just why type shit like I get it it's a personality thing and he probably gets more power from it but I'm looking at the Quincy's powers and the niggas left down there 
it was already looking kind of tough, but it's almost looking like it's literally GG now. Like, that sense of threat, to me, is just no longer there in the Serate. Yeah, and that's kind of one thing I want to talk about, too. Like, the the Stern Raiders don't seem scary anymore. Now, we got Buzz B still down there, and I'm guessing there's probably some other people who can bang, but... From what we saw in this episode, there's, like, damn near no threat. Yeah, especially when you consider just all of who's left on our side down there. Yeah. Like, aside from Ichigo, it's technically just everyone by default. Like, it's free game. Mm -hmm. Like, that sense of threat's really long gone because it's, like, Baz B is probably their best bet as of right now, and it's, like, you got Sun Sui left. You got Biakia left. I'm not sure if, like, you need any of the other Soul Reapers at this point. Then you got everyone else left. Kenny got fucked up, but technically he's still left. Like, Kisuke's in the Serite. Yorichi's in the Serite. Bro, it's everyone. And then, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not really certain if there's any real smoke to be had at this point. I think it's just clean up battles to show niggas. Yeah, like the... I'm I'm guessing they're just getting the not as important stern ridders just to fuck up out the way, and then like, well, I, I have a question with that too. Like, do you see like let's say Basby for example? He seems like a pretty relevant stern ridder. Like you don't see do you see him dying like in this part? Like, see that what what episode was this eight? 10, I think. Or this was 10? Yeah. Probably. Well, I'm thinking about it, and it's like... There's supposed to be two more parts left, but I'm not really certain if the Stern Raiders have enough depth for two more parts. Like... Kind of tough. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really see how you could even stretch it to another part. At least the Serate scene, like the Royal Palace scene, and all that, and even then, like that's gonna be kind of interesting to see how that gets stretched to two different parts. Yeah, cause it's like one more part I can see, but two. Yeah. Oh. Could you? It makes me then ask. Could you see the fight coming back to the Serate with your watch? Nah. Because I don't see it either. Like, I think it was just by default and not the Royal Palace. But, like, it almost seems like what do you need the rest of the Soul Reapers for for the next two parts? Because they're not about to just jump that nigga. Yeah, literally. That's my thing. Like, and you still got Eisen locked up. Don't know what that nigga gonna do. If yeah, he has a point, role in this. I don't know if he does at this point. At this point, I would assume not. Because it's like, even if you could say he's needed in the Royal Palace, because your watch is just that strong, there's no reason to why the Soul Reapers would have to turn to Isaac before sending their own there. Because they're not in that kind of predicament. So it's like, I really just don't see how that sense of threat just comes back. And yeah. it's like, you watch as an orca, too. I'm not, I don't really recall his game plan to the fullest, but it's like, I feel like he would just know better than once the minute these niggas leave, what the state of the rest of the Serate would be. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you still got the niggas on the stage, but that's still not like enough smoke, really. Like, you can just have everyone that went up to the Royal Palace for training just fight one of them one-on-one. Yeah, literally. And as far as the Royal Palace goes, we see it's just the three of them. So it's like, I really don't even know. Like, I don't even really know how they would stretch that to its own part to where just the Royal Palace is its own part. I can sort of see it, though. But, like... Does that mean it's going to be the three of them really showing out versus each Royal Palace member? 
until Ichigo gets there because it's really not that much heads left. That's another question. Like, do you see Ichigo, like, they were working on the cannon and shit. Do you see them actually getting launched in this part? Mm. Like, I let's say it's the end type shit. I want to say, yeah. Like, launched, he should. Like, I would assume by the end of this part, Ichigo should be on his way to the Royal Palace. My thing is... I don't think Ichigo's probably going to end up seeing your watch again until, like, the last part. Because mm. if he sees him again in the next part, unless he loses and then comes back again, it's kind of tough. And then vice versa, if he sees him in the Royal Palace, does that mean your watch already went through all of the other Royal Palace niggas? And if that's the case... And he goes through Ichigo as well. Then who's left to stall until Ichigo comes back? I'm thinking like maybe, maybe your watch makes Ishida try and stop Ichigo, knowing Ichigo would hold back against him. Yeah. So maybe that happens. Your watch does what he's about to do, and then. I don't know what necessarily would happen with the Ishida situation, but your watch does what he does and then like I guess leaves? No, I see that. Like I'm saying like I don't see your watch and Ichigo crossing blades with each other until the last part now. Just cause of how all of that was set up. Like I definitely see that for that way of how you set it up, I think that's probably what's gonna happen. By the time Ichigo and Ishida fight each other. Unless, like, he just catches Ishida lacking when they already split up. I would assume that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah, like, I'm just trying to kind of, like, paint the picture for what could be the next part. Because that still leaves a lot of, like, space. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, I'm starting to think there's a chance that these things just probably don't like crash into each other until that final part because I'm assuming the final battle is probably going to be the final part but there's still so much shit and realistically you would think all of it is just going to by default get covered just because there's not that much other shit to get shown elsewhere like it'd be one thing if there was a whole huge ass war still going on but the war in the Serate feels like it's pretty much over. Yeah. I mean, shit. They, 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 they said it's four parts. They haven't missed yet. So they clearly got some shit up their sleeve. Yeah. So, hey. I'm fine with being in the dark for now. You know what I'm saying? But overall, man, this was a very interesting episode to say the least like the whole zombie aspect with the captains was like it had my mind in the blender a little bit i ain't gonna lie not too too bad but it was it still was like if i had to i don't know like i would say this episode was it was it was a good watch it wasn't nothing super crazy, but it was still good. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. Like, I, I would say, I would say this episode was crazy for me. Actually, like, I feel like they gave a lot of shit, especially the zombie shit too. Like, really seeing zombie Hitsugaya probably give us his best performance to all series. Then you want to just pivot really like I feel like watching Biaki really rock out was amazing too like it wasn't nothing too crazy or anything we haven't uh, like anything that you would say that's not expected but I would say that's where the character favorite just comes in type shit like the fan favorite just comes out it's just nice to see that nigga rock out um I think all around just 
it wasn't nothing like eye popper crazy, but like you said, it was definitely a great watch. And if I had to grade this episode, I'd probably say like a nine point six, nine point seven. See, I'd probably give it like a nine two. Like it, it was a it was definitely a good episode. And it was definitely an enjoyable episode. It's just like Bleach be going dummy. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I for me. I don't know if I put it like, like you know what I'm saying. For me it was kind of one of those like just non like even the non stereotypical cool shit was kinda nice. Like kind of where I go back to saying like fan favorite like it was just nice really seeing all these different aspects of the characters that you really fuck with it kind of just carried the experience for me I feel that I feel that but let us know what you thought about this episode you know what I'm saying drop it in the comments let us know what you think about what's left for Bleach you know what I'm saying we have two parts left hell yeah cause that's a really big ass question, and niggas just can't come with the answer either. Like, we are in the dark like shit. So it's like when you really think about it, there's two parts left, and there's really not that much smoke to even finish out this part. So I will say Bleach is definitely coming with it, but hey. Yes, yeah, sir. Let us know, man. And if you know already, please, for the love of everything that is holy, do not spoil. Pretty please. Thank you. With that being yeah. said, man, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button if you haven't already. And make sure you hit that big red subscribe button as well. And turn on them post notifications so you don't miss an upload just like this one. You feel me? Bleach reviews coming until this shit is over with. You feel me? Make sure you guys check out our Bleach playlist as well to see some of our other reactions. And uh, make sure you guys click on our description. Two links will be waiting for you. One will take you to all of our socials, Sun of Tokyo on every platform. The other one will take you to our Discord. Make sure you guys join that. Come chop it up with us. Come vibe with us. If it is. But uh, yeah, man. With that being said, SOTL.